Rogers. I'm the founder of FitCon. Um, who's been to FitCon? Hey, not bad at all. Thanks for coming. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, so FitCon, we're taking place in April of next year, and we're moving down to the Salt Palace. Um, we're expecting over 25,000 people. We've added over about 150 exhibitor booths. We have about 50, like 15 guests and competitions we're announcing January 1st. So there's tons of stuff we're holding off on until January 1st, so stay tuned to that. Mm -hmm. I met Lindsay at the first FitCon, right? Mm -hmm. You did a live fitness class yep. for us. Yep. And she was the hit. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Um, so what we're doing here is we're, like, uh, we're, we're just doing some seminars. We want to bring value to uh, the, the, the people who follow FitCon follow trainer, her followers, and so we just want to continually bring value and education and knowledge to the people here in Utah. Um, so I want to say thank you all for coming out, and uh, honestly, from what uh, I've met of Lindsay, there's not anyone I've met who's a better person and incredible. She knows her not stuff too as, as well. Um, so after this seminar, um, we have a bunch of Ideal Fit for sale, Ideal Lean uh, for sale. If you want to purchase it, it's available here, um, or some samples. Uh, mm -hmm. Samples and lots of giveaways. Lots of giveaways. Yep. <laughs> um, so that's available. So anyways, without further ado, Lindsay, take it over. Sweet. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Dallin. Okay. So first of all, I am really excited to talk about what we're talking about today because balance, who, who follows me? Who's done my challenges? Raise your hand if you've done my challenges. Just so I know kind of who's in the audience. Okay, cool. Good mix, half and half. Um, also, really quick, this is being live streamed. <laughs> on my Facebook page. So we're gonna open it up to questions or comments or anything at each section, okay? So Marissa is going to be the voice of the live feed audience. So people have questions there. You guys can just type it in. If it happens, if, if she sees it in time, she will ask it. If she doesn't see it in time, then she'll go through, I'll, I'll go through and I'll answer those comments later, okay? So what do you guys think of, what's the first word that comes to your mind when you think of the holidays? Just start it out. Party. Parties, food, food. food. <laughs> indulging. What else? Keep going. Socializing. Socializing. Everyone has to say something. <laughs> Just say. <laughs> I put you on the spot, Renee. Okay. <laughs> so a lot of times, like on in the media, we hear things like "survive the holidays" or "get through the holidays." That's kind of sad, don't you think? Like this is supposed to be a time where you're with your family, you're making memories, you're doing all these. Stress, wonderful stress that I knew someone would say that I was hoping someone would say that um, that's we we shouldn't that shouldn't be the case right and I mean all these things that can cause us stress are valid like you know money gifts time too many things to go to food workouts like how to fit it all in and there it is possible so if we're all fit-minded people I'm assuming because we're here we wouldn't have taken the time out of our nights to come or to watch um, so there is a way to balance it all. And I've got lots of tips, 12. I tried to have 10 because that just sounds better, but I've got 12. But I don't have anything like new or super amazing to say. It's just things I've kind of figured out. So hopefully I'll say something that you guys haven't thought of before. And I want you guys to participate too. And hopefully you guys have some tips or tricks or you guys at home have some tricks um, that can help somebody else, okay? so. Let's go ahead and get going. How do I, let's see. Do I just click? Oh, I just click. Okay, starting with number 12. We're gonna start kind of with workouts and then go into food and then kind of into other random things, okay? So first off, workouts. And I've got my notes on here. I might be looking between both places. Um, short, sweet, and super intense, okay? So a short workout is better than no workout, I promise. Um, so kind of, there's a couple different things that'll help you kind of keep your workout short and intense. Circuit training. Do, do many of you guys do circuit training much? I don't normally, but when I'm short on time, it's a good option. Um, so to set up a circuit training, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do like four or five different exercises um, and then with a the cardio at the end. So you're kind of getting your cardio and your lifting in together in one short workout, okay? Um, so a lot of times you can make it like one body part focused, which would be killer, like a whole, shoulder or a back circuit or something and then move on to a different body part circuit or you can kind of mix it up and do a full body circuit workout or an upper body and lower body circuits um lots of time to i mean lots of different ways you can do it another thing i do when i need to keep my workout short is i plan them and i'm a planner like to the minute planner <laughs> i plan them like to the minute literally so i'll if i have like 40 minutes i'm like okay i'm gonna get in there i'm gonna like 
warm up or foam roll for like two minutes and then I'm gonna spend 25 minutes doing this or whatever. Hello, you can enter the drawing if you want to. In front. <laughs> um, I'm gonna foam roll for a few minutes, I'm gonna do this many minutes of this and then 10 minutes of cardio, like I plan it to the minute. And then no talking, a no talking roll, and I time my rests. So that's a big thing, because how many times are you at the gym and you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna get on Facebook for, for just a minute. <laughs> and you're like, then pretty soon it's been like two and a half minutes, which is not that big of a deal. But if you're trying to get in and out, that extra time does kind of add up. So timing your rest, I always wear a stopwatch when I'm trying to get in and out of there really quick. Um, does anyone else have any ideas on how to keep it short, simple, intense? Yeah. I actually have an app on my phone that when I'm doing my rest, uh -huh. I, I have it going constantly. Mm -hmm. And so like when I have my music in my yeah. ears, it'll beep. Oh, that's yeah, cool. So how do you set it? You yeah. set it how long you want your rest to be, or what do you do? Yeah. What's the name of the app? You can already answer. Yeah. You can raise your hand in a minute if you don't know where to start off. Interval timer. Oh, cool. And so it beeps through your music. Yeah. That's awesome. So I can still be listening to my music and. So interval timer, she said, is an app that will beep at her through her music. That's cool. Anybody else have any ideas? Okay. Moving on. I think I hit everything I wanted to say. Okay. Moving on. To number 11. Focus on the big muscles. Now I don't mean flexing in the mirror, but <laughs> that is always encouraged. So flexing in the mirror, focusing on the big muscles, what I mean is your big muscles like your glutes, your legs, your back, those are going to be the most um, metabolically active and the most that you'll burn the most calories with those kind of workouts. So for the holiday season, for the next five weeks or whatever we have left, isn't that crazy? If you feel like you're gonna be busy and have to cut out workouts here and there, your arms will be okay without <laughs> an arm day. And your calves will be okay if you don't even work them. And your core will be okay if you do one hard core workout a week instead of four, for example. So this is a perfect time of year to condense, maybe look at your workout split. If you're used to doing like a body part split, cut it down, you know, cut out the arm day so you have two leg, an extra leg workout or something, just so you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna burn more calories doing more leg workouts. I'm gonna be cheating a little bit more over the next month or so, so I'm gonna make my workouts a little bit more intense that way, okay? Um, anyone have any tips on that or any thoughts there? Compound movements. Yes, that's my next one. Yes, yep, that's the next one. Okay, we'll move on to that one. Okay, so prioritize what you do during your workout. So for the metabolic boost, you know, you burn the calories you're burning during your workout and also the calories you burn afterwards. Heavy lifting is better than cardio. And when it comes to cardio, sprint and hit training and metabolic conditioning is better than steady state cardio. So we're gonna talk about each one of those a little bit really quick. This isn't necessarily a workout class, but um, then we're gonna go into what I call the power workout that you should plan on every cheat day meal. Cheat meal day, not cheat day. Okay. <laughs> no cheat days. Days you, days you have your cheat meal. Okay. Um, compound movements versus isolation. So compound movements are what she was saying: your squats, your deadlifts, your presses, your pull downs, anything that's um, recruiting more than just isolating that one muscle. Usually, you can think about it like if it's working more than one, or moving more than one joint. So in your squat, you're hinging at your hips and your knees. In your pull downs, you're hinging at your shoulders and your elbows. So it's more of a compound movement. It's recruiting more assistance, accessory muscles in addition to the main muscle you're trying to work. So those are gonna be more, more um, increase your metabolism a little bit more and burn more calories when you center your workouts around those compound movements. So for those, you wanna focus on lifting as heavy as you can. Um, you can keep the reps a little bit lower. I mean, all rep, rep schemes are, are good in different times, but for compound movements, they're great to go a little heavier on. Um, it's okay if you need a little bit more rest on those because you're going to be more out of breath. Um, isolation movements are more single joint, single muscle group workouts or exercises. Like think your lateral raise, your hinging just at your shoulder, your bicep curl, your hamstring curl, leg extension, things like that where you're just moving from one, from one joint. Um, those are great to put into a circuit because you can move from one to the next and you don't need to rest much. Um, and you can even add in for these, for these circuit training, the isolation moves. You can add in um, some core work. If you don't have time to do a core workout or if you're, you know, your week is crazy, add some into your circuit training. And also you can put some cardio in there too, um, which we're gonna talk about those kind of 
cardio movements in just a minute. So with your cardio, um, so my slides are kind of cheesy because I'm not a designer, so I just put random pictures in there. <laughs> I should have had Marissa do my slides. Um, but I thought it was Christmas with the green on top. Okay. Um, okay, cardio. So our hit is not what you what most people usually do or what they think is hit. So if you're running for a minute and then or running fast for a minute and then jogging for a minute, that's not hit. That's interval training, but it's not true high intensity interval training. So if you're doing true, true hit, which is the best for fat burning, um, you're gonna be sprinting like a bear is chasing you, like as fast as you possibly can, and you'll only be able to do that for probably like 15 to 30 seconds or so. If you can sprint harder, then go faster. I mean, if you can sprint longer, then go faster. So sometimes when I'm sprinting, I'll go as fast as I can to where I feel like I'm gonna fall off a treadmill or a trip or my legs will stop working or something, I don't know. Um, so you wanna go as fast as you can and then you can rest for a minute or a minute and a half and that's even, if you can jog during your rest, then you weren't running fast enough. You wanna be like standing on the sides of the treadmill like, <gasps> like not being able to catch your breath. So that would be true hit. Now, I'm not saying that all your workouts should be like that, they shouldn't because that's too taxing on your central nervous system. You want to only do true hit like twice a week or something. And then you can do interval training or metabolic conditioning a couple more times too. Um, so with metabolic conditioning, who's done this before? Whitney has. It's so fun. It's my favorite way to do cardio. You just like get all of your little equipment <laughs> and you set up your little circuit and then you take a picture of it and then you start to work out. That's what you do. <laughs> That's what I do. Um, okay, so with the metabolic oops, conditioning, oh, don't look at that. Hold on. Ah, oh my gosh. How do I go backwards? Does anybody know? Oh. The back arrow. The back arrow? Oh. What? What back arrow? Oh, there we go. Got it, got it, got it. That's not on my keyboard. Oh, on my keyboard. Oh, that's right. Hair exercises that maybe one on their own wouldn't really push you to failure, but four of them together will like kill you. And then you rest for a minute or a minute and a half. I usually do two minutes of work, one minute rest, but you can kind of mix it up. Um, so example exercises would be burpees, rope slams, mountain climbers, um, anything jumpy, any plyometric type of movement. You can even work in some normal cardio, like I will you know, sprint on the treadmill and then hop off and do some of these, or use the rower or a spin bike and then work in things like this. So um, that's kind of, I love doing cardio like that. I just love it so much. Um, so the power workout. Here's the power workout. This is like most metabolic bang for your buck here. Um, 20 minutes, heavy lifting compound movements. You can probably get in, I don't know, maybe like nine or 10 sets. So maybe three exercises or something. Um, so heavy lifting for about 20 minutes. Then you can do probably in 15 minutes, you could probably do two circuits, a couple rounds of two circuits with some isolation moves. You can work in some core there. Um, you can do circuits for a little bit longer if you don't have time for cardio afterwards, or you can do your circuits all as lifting. Like I like to do, um, like pair your back and your biceps or like a bigger muscle group and then the assisting muscle group kind of together in a circuit. You can, there's millions of ways you can do it. And then finish it up with like 10 or 15 minutes of cardio. So that is like a solid workout. That's when you have your no talking rule, your phone out, your interval timer, and you're like just going, going, going. So that's like a solid 45, 50 minutes. So, okay, um, that's during the workout. Anybody have any ideas, tips, thoughts? that section? No? Okay, mm -hmm. moving on. Alrighty, let's move on to food. Doesn't that look so good, you guys? Chocolate cake is my favorite. Um, okay, let me, okay, no food is off limits. Who does that scare? Does that scare anybody? Or are we all kind of okay with that whole moderation thing? If we can hold to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if we can yeah. hold to it, true. <laughs> so um, how many of you guys track your own macros? And then how many of you like follow a meal plan or do whatever? Okay, kind of a good mix. Um, so if you know how to track your own macros, if you don't, here's a little secret plug. I'm not telling you what it is right now. Um, <laughs> you have something coming. I have something coming. <laughs> yeah, I know, guess what, it's all done, it's all done. We're just waiting for the, to be able to put it out there. We're still working on stuff. Anyway, 
Um, I have something coming that will help you with your macros. So, anyways. <laughs> um, so if you know that no food is off limits and you know how to track your macros, you can work in treats into your macros. And ideally, you don't want to be working these in all the time, all year long, but during the holidays, it's okay. You can work it in, you can track it, you can count it, and you're gonna be just fine. Um, if you don't track your macros and you follow a meal plan, or if you intuitive eat and just kind of eat what you've always eaten, that's totally cool too. Um, your post-workout meal is a good time to include any treats that you have been wanting or any sugary things that are lying around your house. Um, so even if you don't have like a treat type of post-workout meal, I always include that in my challenges for people. Um, but what you would do is you just take the carb out of that meal and match calories with the treat that you're putting in. Okay, so the macros may not be exactly the same. Your treat may have higher fat than your carb did or vice versa or whatever. Um, but as long as you're matching calories, you'll be, you'll be fine. Um, so your post-workout window is a great time to have the sugars. Your body actually uses those carbs up really fast and efficiently and it doesn't really discriminate. So um, ideally you want that to be lower in fat, like your post-workout carb. But again, it's not a deal breaker. If you have a cookie and you're gonna have it, have it post-workout versus later, your body will use it a little bit better. What does the higher fat, like what is, what is it oh, do it's, after post-workout? Like it slows down the digestion and so your body won't use it quite as quickly, which again, I don't know how huge of a deal it is. Some people say, no fat post-workout, but Really yeah, that, exactly. So. so it's just kind of, you've got to figure out what works for you. And it's the holidays. If you're going to have the brownie, have it post workout, you know? So, um, so one thing, <laughs> there. One thing you'll, you'll realize, you guys, when a tree is not off limits, sometimes it kind of loses that magical sparkle, you know? When you don't sit and stare at the, the brownie all day, every day, and you just think about the brownie, you love the brownie in your mind <laughs> and then you go to the brownies and you like cut off all the edges until there's like little nubbins for brownies and then you have to just eat them so nobody finds out anyway I don't know nobody would do that though you know, right <laughs> nobody does that anyway when when it's not off limits it's not as desirable sometimes okay this is not the last day in the world that you will see brownies you can fit another brownie in tomorrow or the next day or the next day um, so it's easier to practice moderation Sometimes in the beginning it's hard, but you get used to it and it gets easier. Um, also, when, when you learn how to build these treats in and learn that you can have moderation and you don't go hog wild on the brownies, I love the brownies, <laughs> um, then it's such a freeing feeling like to feel that confidence, oh yeah, I can handle this. The food doesn't own you. I mean, yeah, you are in charge of your habits and your thoughts and your actions and you can control yourself around the brownies, okay? Um, let me see if that's all I can tell you guys. Oh, also, when you're working in, a tip to working in the treats, you don't have to eat the whole thing and you don't have to eat five brownies. Sometimes when you can work in it every day, you can work in half a brownie and you might, like all you'll have to do is literally shave off grams of carbs and, and pro, or not protein, grams of, grams of carbs and fats here and there, and you can fit in that brownie, and you wouldn't even have missed it, and you'll be like, free brownie, that's awesome. So, <laughs> yeah, you won't need quite as much when you can have it more often. Um, okay, any thoughts on that? I have a, no question. I have a yes. question over here. Yes. Christina says, Lindsay, they say abs are made in the kitchen. What are some good recipes for the holiday season that can help me flatten my tummy? a great question. I will research that and get back to you. <laughs> I don't have any off the top of my head. Um, but I will. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Marissa. <laughs> we have a protein ebook, 101 recipes protein ebook. It is, I don't remember the website. What is it? You can find it on idealfit.com. You can find it on idealfit.com. <laughs> $9.99, basically free. Okay. Um, great question because abs are made in the kitchen. Okay. Good question. All right. This is a good one. I love this one. Deal with leftovers and food gifts quickly. Do you guys, I think I've always lived in the wrong neighborhood, no offense to my neighbors, <laughs> but I never have like counters full of treats, right honey? Some people do. Do you guys have counters full of treats from neighbors? It's great to feel the love, right? But sometimes you don't want all those treats. So I have some tips. Um, when you have a dinner party or something like where you make, we just had Thanksgiving in my house. 
I do not want all those pies and casseroles in my house. So you send it home with people that come over. You know, just like make them take it. Just make them. <laughs> I don't care what they say. Make them take it. If they won't take it, then you can take it around to your neighbors. So um, just get out of your house. Because chances are the food that you're serving at these holiday parties are not the foods that are on your healthy meal plan that you want to be eating the next day and the next day. Okay, maybe you want to be eating them, but that you should be eating. Because it's all about balance, right? You're going to have the, like junkier, cheatier foods one day so you get back to your healthy plan the next day, right? Um, so when the neighbors bring you the treats, I have some strategies and then I want to hear yours. Um, what I always do is I'll have a little bite or a little section or whatever I can fit in for the day. Um, or even if I can't fit it in, it looks really good. I just have a bite of it anyway. It's okay. Um, and then give some to my kids. Once we're kind of done with our fill, I will put it in the freezer. But if you put it in the freezer, you have to do a few things. You have to wrap it in saran wrap this way, and then you have to wrap it this way, and then you wrap it in foil, and then you put it in a baggie, and then you put it at the very bottom of the freezer. <laughs> That's what you have to do. <laughs> because brownies don't freeze very hard. You can eat frozen brownies just fine. I promise. <laughs> um, so freeze your treats, because then you can pull them out you know, on some random Sunday when you need dessert, but you don't want to make anything. You've got treats, or if you need to bring something somewhere, you've got most baked goods freeze just fine. Um, you can re-gift them, but just be careful that the person that gave them to you didn't also give them to the person that you want to give them to. <laughs> <laughs> For example, uh, my aunt brought us tons of Rice Krispie treats at Thanksgiving, and we ate a bunch of them, but there were still some left over, so I took them. They were so good, aunt. They're so good. <laughs> but I, so I also took them to my next door neighbor. She's not watching, so she thinks that I made them probably. But I took them to my next door neighbor, and she didn't know. Like it was, and I put a, like a Merry Christmas tag on it, and there you go. You got the treats out, and you gave your neighbor a gift for Christmas. So it's like kill two birds with one stone. Okay, the last one. It's gonna. You guys might not like it. It's okay to throw away the treats. It's okay. Yes, it's okay. And so you might think, but that's wasting food, and they're starving children in other countries, and. Yes, it's true, but think about it this way. So if you eat it and it puts you in a caloric surplus and your body's gonna store it on your butt, that's kind of a waste too, right? So here's what you do, you throw it in the trash, you donate to your favorite charity, and then you move on and you tell your friend thank you. So, way better, just throw it away, yes. I think, I think also you need to, like, you need to, if you're gonna eat it, good, but it needs to be worth it, like don't. Yes. yes. Half the time, yes. totally. No People gave them to you, but they're not really that good. <laughs> so don't just eat them because somebody gave them to you. Yes, good point. Like, it's make sure it's. Worth if it looks like the best brownie you've ever had, yeah. and even <laughs> if you've already hit your macros, you have that brownie. It's okay. But if it doesn't look that good, then just throw it away. Yeah. I paid three dollars. Yeah, how is it? Crisp. It's garbage. Okay, you can go through it. We'll watch you. I'm gonna go. Good job. Arby's, you can know or care. So yeah. it's okay. Yeah, it is okay. Arby's <laughs> just got a few dollars for me. Exactly. <laughs> Donate it. Anyone else have? Okay, so what do you guys do with your treats? Yeah. Well, our neighborhood has actually tried to get away from the treats. Oh, that's so awesome. They actually add up. Yeah. And we do um, one night, Monday night, mm -hmm. we have cocoa and whatever with the neighbors, and we donate whatever you want, and uh -huh. then they, someone donates it to a family, maybe family. Oh, that is awesome. And then you're not even. And that's your neighbor thing. Something. That is a great tradition. So they do a little get together where they have hot cocoa and they all bring stuff to donate. Can you hear her? Do I need to repeat it? Repeat it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just in case. And they donate it to someone in need. So that is a that's a really cool tradition. Anybody else have any ideas or? Okay. Moving on. Okay. Stay busy and stay simple. So. What I mean by this, it's easy to stay busy during the holiday season. That's not really what I'm referring to. When you get to a party or an event, so now I'm gonna talk more about like actually, like your Thanksgiving dinner or your work Christmas party or your Christmas Eve get together, that kind of thing, okay? When you get there, you get busy. You start helping the host in the kitchen. You start slicing things for something, like start you know, helping someone, take some kids downstairs and play, start talking to, your long lost cousin, you know, just stay busy so you don't just stand there by the appetizers and start chowing. Um, so eat simple. I'm sure um, 
well, not, not I'm sure, never mind. Um, eat simple, this is not a food prep class, but you can in one hour crock pot up a whole bunch of chicken, cook a bunch of rice, and bake a bunch of potatoes, and then you have healthy staples on hand, so when you are busy, you can grab some rice and chicken and run, and it's totally fine. Yeah, it might not have like the most flavor ever in the world, but you have your meal, and you didn't have to run through the drive-thru, okay? Um, so if you always have that food on hand, just an hour or two on the weekend, just get a bunch of staples in the fridge, then that'll be just way more simple so that on those days when you don't have the parties or events, that you can stay more on your plan, okay? Um, that's all I have to say about that one. Does anybody have any thoughts there? Um, yeah, one tip for a holiday, I think, is eat water bottle. I mean, just, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, I know Drinking, kind of like, you mean, like, at your events? Yes, like, yes. with you. Like, yeah, just totally. Bring some water. I mean, and I will also else. bring, I bring BCAAs with me everywhere because it's like something sweet you can be sipping on. You can even mix it with, like, Diet Sprite or something, and it feels like your own little cocktail while everybody's having their appetizers, you know? So, yeah, that's a great thought. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. There we go. <laughs> like that water cup? Is that like the pretty water cup you already paid? <laughs> it's like drops. Okay, so in addition to my last point there was holding a cup of water or a drink at all times during your party. So not only is this going to keep you drinking, it's going to keep your belly full, it's going to keep your hands kind of busy too, um, so it'll help you. Also, there's two times where it can be beneficial to increase your water intake. One is on the day of I keep calling it an event. It's not like we're going to these red carpet events, but I don't know what to call it. Like your dinner party or something. If you know you're going to be having a big cheat meal, I just keep thinking of Thanksgiving because it just happened. If you increase your water that day, then that will help kind of fill your, fill your belly so you don't go into it as hungry. Um, but even more important is increasing your water the next day and maybe even the next day. Um, you can double your water. For every gram of carbs you eat, your body's going to hold on to, I've heard it's three and I've heard four three or four grams of water, okay? Which is totally normal and fine, but it makes sense that when you have a meal where you're eating five times the amount of carbs as normal, you're gonna be pretty bloated, which again is totally normal and fine. But most people don't wanna hold on to that, so you, you wanna flush it out. And the way you, you, way you flush water is by drinking lots of water, which if that's a new concept to you, that doesn't make any sense, I know, but just trust me. <laughs> um, so you can double your water intake the day after your cheat meal. Two gallons is not going to kill you. It might make you feel kind of weird. Act, make sure you add extra salt to your food. It'll balance your electrolytes. Um, a gallon and a half even will be enough to kind of flush you. If you're used to a gallon. If you're only used to like half a gallon, then go to a gallon and that'll be perfect. Um, anyone else have any ideas on drinking through the holidays? <laughs> okay. Um, carb cycling around your cheat meals. So if you've followed my challenges before, you know, you know that I include what we call flush days. So basically all a flush day is, it's low carbs where you time the carbs around your workout. So you'll have um, some carbs before your workout, some carbs after your workout, and the rest of the day is protein and fats and veggies, if you have veggies too. And what you're also going to do is you're going to double your water intake, your normal water intake. Um, make sure you salt your food. Just throw that out there, otherwise you'll feel kind of sick. Um, and nothing artificial, just nice, whole, clean foods. This kind of day feels so good after a big cheat meal or event or fancy events that we go to. Um, so you can time a flush day after a big cheat meal. How many of you guys have done, even if you didn't call it a flush day, have you ever like done that where you kind of cycle your carbs and you have them lower? Sometimes we kind of do this naturally. Like you wake up the next day and you're, I was like so full after Thanksgiving. My Whitney and I text each other and we're like, I've only had like 500 calories today and I'm still full. <laughs> like, sometimes you cut your body kind of just tells you that, you know, if you're in tune enough to notice that you're just you're still hungry. So um, that's kind of a, just back to the whole balance thing. You indulge this day, you kind of make up for it this day. Don't think of it as like a punishment. You should not think of it as a punishment. Don't think, oh, I cheated here, so I have to make up for it here. That's not, that's not the point of it at all. The point of this is kind of just to make you feel better. Just flush that water from your system, make you feel good, fuel your body again with healthy foods. Also, if you do something kind of more strict like this, it helps you not let like the treats kind of dwindle into the next day. Think, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna be really good. I'm gonna cut down on my carbs and drink lots of water. You know, it kind of helps with that. Any thoughts here? Okay. 
Okay, we're getting down to the best ones. Actually, these are not, it's not like top five. Number one's not any better than number five. Okay. Um, <laughs> adjust your food the day of the event. So some people will, you know, totally skimp on calories all day long because they're saving up for a night. But that means you're going to get there and you're going to be starving and you're going to just like eat everything. So I don't usually recommend that for most people, but what I do recommend is just slightly shaving off from meals. Like if you're used to, you don't, don't shave off from protein, just slightly shaving off from carbs and fats. If you're used to like, I don't know, half a cup of oats, have a third of a cup. So just a little bit less, so you are kind of saving some calories a little bit, but you're not gonna go through the day overly hungry or starving. You probably won't even miss it too much. Um, also, another tip is to have um, have a serving of protein right before you go. So your body is not near as likely to store extra protein as it is with carbs and fats. So even if that extra protein serving puts you over your protein for the day, not that big of a deal. It'd be worth it if it saves you from, you know, going in ravenous um, and eating everything in sight. So, and then the other tip is to stay busy. I, on the water slide, I forgot this tip, but I really love it. So before you have any sort of sugary thing, or if you your, if your weakness is like breads or appetizers, whatever your weakness is, for me it's sugar. Before you have a dessert or sugar, drink three cups of water. That's a lot, and it's going to make you feel full, but not too full for your treat. You'll still have it, I'm sure, but you're more likely to be satisfied with one or even a half, you know. Um, so that's back on the water slide. Um, okay. So adjusting your food the day of the event, does anybody else have any ideas of things that have worked for them or tips, tricks? We have a question. Mm. Yes, question. Um, somebody asked, can that extra protein be a protein ideal fit? Yes. Shake. That is perfect. That's actually what I do is I just chug a shake real quick. So I'll just mix up a scoop of ideal fit um, with water, drink it, perfect. Good question. Um, okay. Number three, okay, plan every, every little detail. Um, okay, so starting with the weekly plan. I love planning. I get really excited about planning things. Um, all right, so weekly plan. What I want you to do is every Sunday, I want you to look at your week, okay? And you can start this now. Like evaluate your week, see what you've got. Because I already have like piano recitals and Christmas parties, like already starting. So um, if you have one event, one red carpet event in your week, then that's perfect. You have your cheat meal, you do your power workout, you drink lots of water, and you move on. No big deal, okay? If you have more than one event, you may have to pick and choose, because remember, we're trying to maintain our fitness level right through the holidays, so there is gonna be some, there may be some sacrifice involved, you know, um, balance, right? So if you have more than one event, you may need to pick and choose, like let's say you have one event where it's gonna be all of your grandma Gertrude's favorite rich desserts that you just love all of them. So maybe that's your cheat meal, okay? And then there's another event, maybe you have three, let's pretend you have three, okay? Because you're really popular. You have, <laughs> you have another event where like your aunt Millie is making some of your favorite foods, but maybe not as many favorite foods as grandma Gertrude. And so you might be able to call aunt Millie and ask her like what she's making and fit little bits of it into your macros. So you have one cheat meal event, one event where you kind of like fit some treats into your macros for the day. Um, and then maybe you have another event where you just eat before you go and you drink lots of BCAs during it. And you just socialize and you are thankful for the company. And that's totally cool. I've done that many times. Um, so if there are multiple things that you really want to splurge at, just that's totally fine too. You just have to make that decision and own it and you know, be okay with it. If you have like an event on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and you really wanna have a cheat meal on all those days, that's okay. You may gain a little bit of body fat, you may not, I don't know, you just have to be okay with that. So what you could do is you could do flush days in between, okay? So you'd have like a lower carb day where you drink lots of water and then plan your cheat meal and then I would definitely try to have moderation, eat mindfully, all that kind of stuff on those things. So weekly plan, okay. Daily plan, this is kind of the same kind of stuff that I already said. Don't skip your workout if you can avoid it because that is gonna give you that metabolic boost for that day, help you use that food. If your schedule's pretty open and you can work out right before your red carpet event, that is awesome. <laughs> work out, then go and have your treats. 
Um, don't go into the party starving. And just kind of remember, check some balances, balance. If you had a big lunch, have a small dinner, you know, be intuitive that way. Okay, anybody have any tips, tricks? I have another question. Yes. Kelly would like to know, for the cheat meal event, what should the calorie range be for the meal? Does not matter, okay? Again, I don't want you to eat until you're like stuffed silly. Like maybe I was on Thanksgiving. But I didn't eat too. I just got so full. Um, so, <laughs> but I don't want you to go into these things like stressing and counting and obsessing. If it's at a restaurant, you need to be able to go to the restaurant and just order and not overthink it and not stress. You need to be able to go to the party and just have what looks good. So if it is your designated cheat meal, Definitely try to have moderation because that just feels better, you know, but don't, don't worry. Don't stress. Don't overthink. If it is one of your events where you want to track it though, then you will kind of need to think about it. Um, one tip really quick. If you are trying to track, I picked this up like I was going to track something right now. If you, if you're trying to track your meal, but obviously these are recipes, you don't know what's in them. What you can do is you can go in your app and you can just search brownie. That's the automatic default examples tonight. You can search brownie and just like choose one. It's gonna be way better than just saying whatever, I'm gonna eat all the brownies. Just go in and choose a brownie, like maybe look at a, a different, couple of different ones, try and choose like an average calorie range for the brownie, you know, and just log a brownie. It may not be exactly what you ate, but it'll be close enough, okay? Yeah, good question. I have another one. Okay. Misty would like to know, how often can you do a flush day? Good question. So in a row, I would never recommend more than two because low carbs on, on days on end, in my opinion, is not a good idea. Um, if it is intermixed with, I don't love the huge yo-yo swing either. Um, so I wouldn't recommend like a huge cheat and then a flush day, a huge cheat and then a flush day. That's not good for your body either. Um, but if, for example, like you have Christmas Eve and Christmas and you indulge a little more than you wanted to, you could do two flesh days after that, and that would be okay. But just make sure you go back to your normal eating after that. So, I would say no more than two a week if, if you were, that, that'd be the max for sure. One ideally, so. Okay, next up, to track or not to track, and I'm not referring to your macros here. So, some people may not like this one, but during the holidays I do recommend weighing and measuring, taking your measurements, because it, your pants get tight kind of fast, right? And if you just go by how your clothes feel, wouldn't you rather catch it before your pants don't fit and not wait until they don't fit? And then you're like, oh crap, oh my gosh, I'm up like 12 pounds, dang it. But if you were taking your weekly weight and measurements, you would have seen it coming, okay? So a couple things to keep in mind. Um, fluctuations, I think we all know this, are totally normal. Um, so if you weigh in one time and it is up, you can totally chalk it up to a fluctuation, okay? But if you notice it going up each week, then you might want to reevaluate some things with your food or your workouts. Um, so you're watching for upward trends, not just one increase. Whenever I have a client whose weight goes up, I never freak out the first time it goes up. It's if it goes up again that we want to maybe tweak things or reevaluate. Um, so, oh yeah, let's see. I feel like there was something else I wanted to say here. Hang on. Uh, oh, time your weekly weigh-in and measurement checks um, as far away from your last cheat meal as possible. So if you had a cheat meal, or basically you just do it on the morning of your cheat meal. So it's, let's say it's a Saturday night and you're going to have a cheat meal, so do your measurements and your check-in um, with yourself on Saturday morning, okay? After going to the bathroom before eating or drinking. That's the most consistent time of day, okay? Anybody have any thoughts on this? Totally disagree? It's okay. No? Okay. Last one, and this in my opinion is the most important, managing your expectations. So you can, you totally can lose fat through the holidays. You totally can. Whether you can do that with balance, I don't know. It depends on the person. So I would encourage you to, if your goal is fat loss right now, I would encourage you just for the next 30 days, or like, what do we got? 33 days or something, to switch it to maintenance. So I promise your holiday experience will be way more enjoyable if you're not like, oh my gosh, I didn't lose a pound this week. Maybe I shouldn't have eaten this or this or this, or maybe I shouldn't eat at that party. Like if you just chill and make your goal maintenance instead of weight loss, 
then come January, they're just the same, that's awesome. How many people like maintain through the holidays? That's not that common. Most people gain five or 10 or more, right? Um, so if you just focus on keeping your body where it's at, just for a month, it's really not that long in the grand scheme of things, right? Um, then, you'll, then you'll be ready in January to hit it hard and continue on whatever goal, whatever your goal was before. If you're working on a fat loss program, like let's say you're already in these good habits, you can totally stick with them. You don't have to stick, like change over to a maintenance type of program if you just change your mindset. Because if you're on a fat loss type program, then you're going to allow yourself some more cheats here and there, just a little bit more flexibility, and you change your mindset to reflect your behavior, then it's just gonna be that much more enjoyable, okay? Other thing, expect things not to go as you expect, and plan for it. So if you make a plan in advance, okay, on days when um, you miss your workout because you slept through your alarm and then you plan to go at four before dinner and then you didn't have time, what are you gonna do? Maybe you do a 10 minute like ab workout with the kids at night or something. Something's better than nothing, okay? Or maybe you're totally out of food and you don't know what to do or something like, whatever your situation may be, make a plan, like a workout type of plan, miss your workout, and then a food type of plan. My nutrition's off and I don't know what to do, you know? Make a plan about, for both of those situations. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on that one? Expectations? Anything? Anybody have any final, let me see, any final, so my main things are, make sure you get your workout in, make that workout effective, Plan, 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 plan your week, plan your carbs, plan your water, everything, and then adjust your expe expectations. I think if you can do all of those things, you can make it through, you can like thrive all the way through on the January 2nd, weighing the same thing, <coughs> wearing the same pants, and feel like, oh my gosh, that was so satisfying. I had a wonderful December. You know, you totally can do that. Um, anybody have any closing thoughts? Uh, I think a lot of it was on like uh, cheat meals. Um, mm -hmm. I have a, I have a lot of ideas on that. Yeah. Like you know, incorporating like digestive enzymes. Yes, that's a good one. Or probiotics. Uh huh. Or um, apple cider vinegar. If you're doing like the sweets, on mm -hmm. like cinnamon, vanadium, chromium, helps to. So tell that. us how how you would use that. Well, so um, if you know when going in that you're gonna pay out like for all these meat uh -huh. at place. Um, so with uh, before your first bite or on with your first bite, take a digestive enzyme. Mm -hmm. And then, and then also you can add sort of like you know, pepper, pills, or whatever you want as well. Well, that's a good one. And then, um, again, if you're then near the end, you know, like in between plates. Um, plates. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, you can add in the digestive digest enzymes. Mm -hmm. I even got my wife hooked on like papaya enzymes. They're oh, cool. Yeah. Like They're really good for the digestion. You take, take those ones. Oh, I like sweet things. <laughs> and, so it's kind of like that. and then, if you do plan on doing like the, the more dessert, mm -hmm. um, you can use like cinnamon or something to help with um, regular blood sugar. Oh, cool. And then, if you're into really into carbs, like like breading it up or mm -hmm. pasta, you can either do like a C3G. I don't know the exact. It, it's a strict acronym. I don't know the, mm -hmm. the C3G. Or there's also carb blockers as well. Yeah. Helps you pass through. So you can enjoy it, but then it helps you. Get through your body fat better. Yeah. yeah. And then afterwards, when you get home or before you take out some of your. Those are great tips. Stuff. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I eat a lot. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are awesome. And I do use outside of your digestive enzymes, and I didn't even think to put that in there. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. We have giveaways. Lots of giveaways. So, we also have.